Welcome back, Patrick here. And in this video, we're going to talk about the parent function f of x equals one over x. And sometimes you'll see this called the reciprocal function. Right, and this is a unique function, y equals one over x. There's going to be lots of new stuff that I introduce in this video, lots of new characteristics that you may not have seen before. And because this function is so unique, I'm actually going to use a bunch of x and y values to try to really figure out what the shape is going to look like. And the x values that I'm going to use in particular are negative 2, negative 1, negative 0 0.5, 0, positive 0.5, positive 1, and then positive 2. Now for this parent function, your teacher may use different points. I'm going to use these. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these points, plot them, and see how the shape of this, uh, of this function is going to look. So starting with negative 2, notice we'll have 1 over negative 2, which is negative 0.5. If we plug in negative 1 for x, 1 over negative 1 is just negative 1. 1 over negative 0.5, that would give us negative 2 if you plug that into your calculator. And here's where stuff starts getting interesting. So notice if we plug in 0 here, you can't take a number and divide it by 0. You can't take anything and divide it by 0. It's going to be undefined. So 1 divided by 0 is actually undefined, and that's what I'm going to write here. I'm going to write undefined. And I will come back to this later on in the video and explain what it means. So moving on, we got 1 over 0.5, which would give us positive 2. 1 over 1, which is 1. And then 1 over 2, which is positive 0.5. Okay, so let's graph these points here. So we'll have 1 and 2. We'll have 1 and 2. We'll have negative 1, negative 2. Then we'll have negative one. Let's actually space it out a little more. Try to make this as to scale as possible, like that. All right, so let's go through these one by one. We got negative two and negative 0.5, the x value of negative two, the y value negative 0.5. Negative 0.5 is here for the y value. So that point is going to be, you know what? I'm gonna erase these just because I feel like they're gonna get in the way. So negative two and 0.5, that would be like over here. And then we have negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. And then we have negative 0.5, negative 2. So negative 0.5, an x value, and then negative 2 is the y value. So that looks like that. 0 is undefined, so let's skip that. We got 0 0.5 and 2. 0 0.5 and 2. Then we got 1 and 1. And then we got 2 and 0 0.5. Let's actually put this a little higher. 2 and 0.5, that's like over here. All right, so kind of weird looking dots here, a weird looking shape for this graph. But when you connect them, the way it's going to look is like this. So you're going to have this part of the graph, and then you're going to have this part in this quadrant for the graph like that. And this is from negative 2 to positive 2, but if you scaled out and you kind of looked at this graph zoomed out, it would basically look like this. Okay, so now notice that at this x value 0, it's undefined, so notice that it's never going to touch this x value of 0 here. Okay, notice that it gets closer and closer to it but it never fully touches that x value of zero. And so what that means is that this function here, it contains an asymptote. It actually contains two asymptotes, which I will discuss in a bit, but just in general, what an asymptote of a graph is, is basically that a line that a function, or it could be actually a relation as well. So let's write relation or function approaches but never touches. 
a line that a relation or function approaches but never touches. And notice that that is happening at this x value of 0. Right? The, the function is approaching that x value of 0, but it's never touching it down here and up here, hence why it is undefined. Okay, and there's actually multiple reasons graphically why a y value for a certain function can be undefined, but one of the reasons why is because there's an asymptote, and that is the case over here. And more specifically, notice that this line here, this x value of zero, that is a vertical line. And so what we say is that this function here has a vertical asymptote. And the vertical asymptote is x is equal to 0. That vertical line right there right, has a vertical asymptote. But also notice that if we kind of flip our view, we also have a horizontal asymptote. Because notice over here, the y values are approaching 0, but they're never touching on this side and on this side over here. So not only is there a vertical asymptote for this function, but there's also a horizontal asymptote. So asymptotes can be vertical or horizontal, and they can actually be slant as well. You won't be learning that in this course, but you could have asymptotes that are slant. But we're going to be focusing on vertical and horizontal asymptotes in, uh, in this chapter. So there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, there's a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0 as well. And throughout the section, we'll get into more detailed discussion about vertical and horizontal asymptotes, how they're affected with certain transformations, but we're just dealing with the basic parent function 1 over x, and those are the respective asymptotes for this specific function here. So notice the x value can't be 0, but also notice the y value can never equal 0. If you think about it, there's no x value that you could plug in here that is going to make this y value equal to 0. Right? If we plug in 10 here, you'll have 1 over 10, which is 0.1. If you plug in 1,000 here, you'll have 1 over 1,000, which is a very small number. It's close to 0, but it's not equal to 0. 0 you can't plug in, right? There's no x value that you could plug in. 1 over a million, it's a very small number, or 1 over negative a million, very small number, close to 0, but it's never going to equal 0. Hence why it's approaching that y value 0, but never touching it, so there's a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. So, the, uh, the domain and range of this is going to be pretty interesting then because of these restrictions on x and y. So starting with the domain, two different formats you can write it in. So you can say all the x values can be anything, but x cannot equal 0. That's one way to write the domain. Another way is you would say x is an element, and then you have to go from the leftmost point to the rightmost point. So notice all the, neg all the x values, all the negative x values are defined for this function. You could plug in any negative x value here and you're going to get some kind of y value. So the x values, if we read from left to right, they can go from negative infinity, but where is there a break? There's a break at this x value of 0. And it's not inclusive of 0, so we would put a circle bracket there. Or it could also be from here. It could be from 0 to positive infinity, not inclusive of the 0. So xer, x, cannot, x can be anything except for 0. Another way to show that is like this. All the x values can go from negative infinity to 0, not inclusive of 0, or from 0 to positive infinity, not inclusive of 0. They could be any positive value all the way to positive infinity. Right, so either or, that is the domain. The range is actually going to be the same thing. y can be anything, but y cannot equal 0. 
right? If we go from the negative most y value to the positive most y value, notice there's a break at that y value of zero. If we put into this notation, we have x is an L or a y is an element from negative infinity to zero, not inclusive of zero. There's a circle bracket or from zero to positive infinity. All right, so that is the reciprocal function one over x. Again, we're gonna get into more detail about it, especially when we start dealing with uh, transformations, but that is how the reciprocal function looks, and that is the domain and range for it.